good morning everybody welcome to the uh, session today a very interesting session and uh, i must uh, tell all of you that uh, we are very grateful to all our panelists uh, who have joined us today on this uh, sunday morning I will request Dr. Sahil Kapoor to kindly start the session. Good, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I hope everybody is uh, doing well and, and you can hear me. Uh, uh, I, I would like to welcome all the participants here and our distinguished panelists. Uh, and thank you everyone uh, to so that you have been able to take out your uh, precious time and join us for this panel discussion. Uh, the primary focus for this panel discussion will be on a syndrome which is called as uh, Tourette syndrome, which is a very rare uh, condition. And uh, we as acupuncturists, we tried and treated this condition with, uh, with acupuncture. Along with that, we'll also try and focus on uh, some other chronic diseases, you know, which we have tried to treat with, with, with acupuncture and uh, been able to receive some good, good uh, results with it. Along with that, we have some uh, beneficiaries of acupuncture who have got good uh, results with acupuncture, and they would also like to share their uh, uh, outlines or their inputs on you know how how acupuncture helped them. I am Dr. Sahil Kapoor. I am a senior acupuncturist working at the uh, prestigious Sir Gangaram Hospital at the uh, Department of Acupuncture, and uh, uh, I would like to first invite. Dr. C.S. Agarwal uh, to shed some light about Tourette syndrome and also discuss his experience in dealing with such patients. Uh, Dr. C.S. Agarwal is a senior neurologist at Sir Gangaram Hospital with nearly four decades of experience in treating complicated cases like epilepsy, stroke, its rehabilitation, migraines, etc. Sir, I hand, hand over the session to you. I'll try and unmute you, sir. One sec. Hello. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. Please. So, uh, friends, we are going to discuss a very, uh, as Sahil told you, uh, very interesting but a very disabling condition called uh, Tourette syndrome. Uh, the attention of the public as usual, was drawn to this particular entity by Bollywood, Bollywood's movie called Hitchki. So, uh, hello. Hello, can you hear me, sir? 
Yeah, I can hear you, but uh, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you, sir. Please, please yeah, go on. Because sir. you unmuted me. Uh, you muted sorry, me. Sorry, sir. Sorry, please. Yeah. Please go on. Yeah, so as I mentioned, the attention of the general public was brought to the attention uh, by that bo famous Bollywood movie, Hitchki. Now, uh, Tourette syndrome uh, is a hyperkinetic movement disorder. The exact incident and prevalence uh, in the society is unknown. While the tics are quite common in the society, uh, as mentioned by Sahil, Tourette syndrome is uh, quite uncommon. So, and you know, broadly speaking, the tics can be classified into three categories, what is called as transient tic disorder, then chronic tic disorder, and then Tourette syndrome. Transient tic disorder you must have seen, is quite common in school going children, you know, between eight to 10 years of age. You, know, you must see them, you know, somebody's, you know, tensing the eyes, somebody lifting the shoulder, somebody making faces. But, you know, it usually disappears in about a year or two's time. Uh, the other one is chronic uh, tick disorder, which you carry to the adulthood or to the elderly also, or uh, adult and ad um, adolescents also. Uh, but the Tourette syndrome is not only uh, ticks. It is uh, much more than ticks, and every tick disorder is not Tourette syndrome. That we must understand very clearly. So the Tourette syndrome, as I mentioned, the incidence is quite unknown, uh, but it is um, definitely a very rare disorder. And it's a combination of two, three things. Like you should have, you know, motor tics, verbal tics, and associated psychiatric syndromes, like ADHD and obsessive compulsive neurosis. The exact cause of Tourette syndrome is not known, but it is possibly a combination of various factors which include prenatal, intranatal, that is a pre before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and after the childbirth. Before pregnancy means some this genetic disorder, which is still late, not very well elucidated. It's not a monogenic disorder, possibly a complex interplay of multiple genes. Then intranatal, that means the illnesses which the mother undergoes during pregnancy. These are the factors which also influence the developing child's mind to develop this disorder. And then postnatal, that is developmental. So the exact etiology is not known and that is of the reason the treatment is a big problem. Now coming to the treatment, the most important, uh, there was, you know, there were not really much guidelines uh, as to how to go ahead, what, what is the algorithm? That means how do you proceed to treat a case of uh, uh, Tourette syndrome? But now over the years, not much has been done in terms of finding a new agent or something like that. But at least there is a crystallization of the concept and there is a good algorithm that how do we start the treatment. So the first treatment is cognitive behavior therapy. And in that, there are quite a few techniques which have been found to be very successful. In fact, this is the only area in the treatment of Tourette syndrome where, where you have a uniformity of results across the world. And there are various types. One is the habit reversing. I don't know much about the cognitive behavior therapy. But I think one which I could understand was habit reversal technique. That means whenever you get an urge to uh, uh, have a tick, you just try to do an opposite or you engage your mind in some other activity. Like that, there are quite a few things which can be done. Uh, but for that, you need a very dedicated holistic approach to the patient. The second is pharmacotherapy. Again, uh, there's very questionable developments in this field. The, the neurotransmitter, which is, uh, again, it's a chemical locha. So the most common uh, agents, it is considered to be the chemical which is responsible for the Tourette syndrome is considered to be dopamine. So they say it is a excessive dopamine um, uh, you know, release syndrome. And for that, the, the, you have to basically see the dopamine blocking drugs. And the most important are the ones which we use for you know, various psychiatric disorders like meloperidol and others. But uh, in this category of drugs, there is a new drug, or there is a drug which is now considered to be the best uh, dopamine blocking drug, that is Arpiprazole. Uh, besides that, you have certain agents which cause depletion of dopamine. These are dopa depleters. Again, the trials are not very confirmatory. There is a new drug called uh, Epi, I am forgetting the name, which is considered to be a good candidate for uh, treating this disorder related to dopamine. And then thirdly, there is some Chinese medicine called Ning Dong, 
or a few other names which I'm forgetting, they say they have got great results. But since the Chinese uh, system of medicine is not very, it's not uh, available for scrutiny, so it's, it's very difficult to believe what is true and what is not true. Then thirdly is the uh, uh, surgical treatment, that is deep brain stimulation. Again, uh, it is not yet conclusively proved that it helps, or if it helps, where do we put the needle and things like that. So there is a huge scope of uh, alternative treatment or treatments other than uh, behavioral therapy. Uh, and here comes possibly the role of um, uh, acupuncture besides various other ways. And since it is a, a new uh, transmitter, neurotransmitter related problem, that it makes sense to treat these patients with uh, uh, acupuncture because acupuncture, as all everybody knows, triggers points in the body to release the endogenous um, hormones or neurotransmitters, which can alter the course of the illness. I have no personal experience. I'll be very happy to see what Raman has to show me. And if it is, uh, you know, turns out if Raman is uh, convinced that it help, will help, I think it makes sense to do a, you know, a big trial or something like that uh, to treat this very, very terrible, terrible you know, uh, and, and, uh, malady. And um, I, I'm, I'm very keen to listen to Sahil and Raman uh, and know the story of this gentleman. Yes, just last one point. I think yoga, as I always mention at the end of all treatment paradigms, it is always underplayed. To my mind, it can be a hugely beneficial uh, treatment therapy. But unfortunately, the ones which we are uh, the gurus in yoga, we just neglect the same thing for every possible reason. So now I hand over the mic again to Sahil to enlighten us on this case and his ideas about how acupuncture held or whatever. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank you, Dr. C.S. Agarwal, sir. Thank you so much for your uh, kind words and your uh, uh, understanding of this particular uh, syndrome in short. I hope our uh, uh, viewers were able to understand, at least get some some knowledge and uh, dr cs agarwal i i totally agree with you that you know uh, nowadays okay. integrative medicine is what is uh, you know the uh, need of the hour so yes some new some new studies with the with with probably the the integration of yoga the integration of western medicine acupuncture we absolutely you know need to do that and you know with a with a institute like ours where we have such such a big you know uh, uh, knowledge base, you know, so many uh, DNBs, you know, uh, present with us. I think it 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 becomes a very important center where we can do uh, such uh, uh, you know uh, knowledgeable studies and all. Yes, thank you so much, sir. Thank you once again. Uh, all right. Uh, I would also request the audience if they can please type in their queries and their uh, questions in the chat. So, so that we can try and answer most of them at the end of this session. Uh, next, I would like to hand over the uh, session to, to Dr. Raman Kapoor, <clears throat> who will be speaking about his patient, Naman, who is a case of Tourette syndrome. And he'll also explain how acupuncture helped Naman to uh, recover well. And, you know, being a rare condition, how, how acupuncture can be used uh, like it was used for uh, Naman's case. Uh, Dr. Raman is the head of department, the Department of Clinical Acupuncture at Sir Gangaram Hospital, where he's been practicing for the last 25 years. And uh, his entire practice spans over the last four, four, uh, four decades in uh, clinical acupuncture. He's also the uh, recipient of the first and only Padmashri in medical acupuncture in the year to, uh, 2008. He specializes in dealing with chronic and complicated medical conditions. Uh, Dr. Raman, I hand over the session to you. Uh, very good morning to everybody. Uh, first of all, a very warm welcome to all our panelists as well as all our viewers. Everybody on a Sunday morning who will be able to spare time to join us today. And uh, uh, listen to this very interesting case, which I am wanting to discuss. And first of all, you know, at the outset, I must thank uh, uh, Naman's father, Saibal, uh, who 
was the one who gave me this idea of uh, and i think the encouragement which i got from him as a gentleman i must tell all of you you see it's very rare today in today's modern world to find people who would at the outset come out and say look my child got better out of this very dreadful condition and i am ready to share this story of mine with the world and let others who have been suffering through this condition also get helped so this is something which i really appreciate in this gentleman and and i must tell you that this is very rare today i in the last four decades as dr sail was telling you i must have treated enormous number of difficult conditions also and many a times i may have asked a lot of these people to share their stories so that other people can benefit but most of the time i have found that those people feel shy about sharing this you know information but here is one gentleman who was open about it and he said no no this is something which needs to be shared and as many people can know about it the awareness will only grow and as dr cs agarwal rightly put it we will be more than happy to do a study of uh, a, a small uh, sample size at gangaram hospital which is obviously a research hospital also and always supports such activities so i come back to naman's story naman is today 13 years of age and he came to us in september of 2021 when naman's father saibal brought him to me and he was a diagnosed case of uh, tourette syndrome uh, since the last 3 years his problem initially started with you know what are known as vocal tics and thereafter it followed up by motor tics so vocal tics are when suddenly the child starts wobbling and speaking uh, in a, a incoherent manner wherein you find that the uh, you know it is a recurrent uh, sort of a habitual thing so tick is a habitual thing which goes on recurring again and again and this is followed by motor ticks which were initially seen on the face so if i was to replicate it will be like this so you can make out on the face suddenly a child and this is uncontrollable it is not under the control of the child it is not under the control of the patient and he will go on doing it and this is this can be quite traumatizing to anybody who's around him the family everybody and initially started with the face and then gradually it started into the head so if everybody was seeing to me you can just visualize you can start moving the head and then suddenly sometimes even jerk your shoulders so these are involuntary this is not voluntary this is not what he is doing on his own this is what he is it is happening as a part of this syndrome and associated symptoms along with this would include winking of the eyes suddenly you know sitting in a social gathering having dinner with friends or with a family and suddenly you start winking eyes so any other person who would be watching a child like this would obviously feel quite uh, strange as to what is happening and that is how these uh, symptoms appear and subsequent to that there could be repeated grunting <laughs> so this is something which is a symptom of the same disease and again a very uh, a difficult symptom to be when presented to anybody else would feel quite awkward about it but actually it is a symptom of the disease and then recurrently sticking out the tongue and licking of the lips all the time all the time you know it can happen at any time so for a child like this to be going through for a long period of time and also being a very hyperactive child the parents would obviously get very worried and it is genuine and as a parent i must uh, uh, share with you saibal sir really tried his level best to go to the best of the doctors be it homeopathy be it ayurveda be be it western medicine anywhere cognitive therapy he went to every specialist possible but from everywhere he didn't get any positive response so that is the time that he thought about coming to me because he had read somewhere about acupuncture working in uh, towers so he came to me and uh, we started treating this child with acupuncture and i must tell you that in addition to the classical acupuncture needles which we used to give him we also did something which i had just learned at that time only december of 2019 i remember vaguely i had gone to uh, japan 
uh, and uh, learned a very specialized new technique known as prickling neurostimulation technique, also known as PNSD. This was developed by a Japanese neurosurgeon who left his neurosurgery practice and shifted to acupuncture because of his own experience of a backache, which was never getting better with anything. He even had steroid shots, but he was not getting better with it. Finally, he went to one of his doctor colleagues who was doing acupuncture and he got immediately relieved. So he suddenly decided that, you know, I don't know why I'm into neurosurgery. I better start doing acupuncture. He went to China, learned it and came back to Japan, started practicing. But then he realized that there is something more to his practice, which probably he, would, he should do. And so he went back to his uh, old uh, college days and decided about going into the dermatome theory. Uh, Dr. C.S. Agarwal, we all know what dermatomes are. And so he decided to study the dermatomes. And there he developed this new pattern of therapy wherein he doesn't use any needles at all in his practice. He uses a very simple tool, which is known as a PNST tool. It is nothing else but a very sharply pointed tool, uh, uh, which is used to prickle at points. And these points are located along the dermatomes. So his entire theory is dermatome theory. So whether it's a neurological pain, whether it's a knee joint arthritis pain, whether it's a cervical spondylitis pain or a low back or a sciatica or even mental conditions, he will treat it by using this tool, which is known as a PNST. So what we did in the case of Naman was we did a very basic PNST therapy, which he does in almost every patient who will come to him in his practice. Why? Because the basic PNSD treatment is done on the scalp. Most of the points are on the scalp, around the eyes, around the nose, around the mouth, and in this zone. So all the basic PNSD points are here because here the dermatome which is supplying the face and the head is the dermatome of the trigeminal nerve. So that is what he was prickling. And as a result of this, he was basically treating this, the autonomic nervous system. So he was basically balancing the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So I use this treatment protocol. or It doesn't take more than three to four minutes in a patient to, de to do a basic PNSD treatment. And all patients who come to me for a stress syndrome, for anxiety, insomnia, Parkinsonism, any condition which is related to stress today. And I think all of you, fibromyalgia, we will agree with me that today's stress is becoming a major root cause of a lot of diseases. So he will just do a basic PNSD treatment. And when I talked to him about Naman's case, I did take his advice also. He suggested to me that in addition to whatever acupuncture protocol you are following, you should add the basic PNSD treatment. So I must uh, confess to all of you that I re relentlessly use uh, PNSD now in my practice. So along with the basic PNSD treatment, I use acupuncture. And we initially use this treatment daily for about four weeks, once a day, six days a week. And in four weeks time, we really started seeing the improvement, which was a big, big plus for us, for the father, for the mother, for the child. And as he improved, we started reducing the frequency of treatment. From a daily treatment, we shifted to thrice a week and then to twice a week and then to once a week. So gradually we tapered off. As the patient gets better and better, we taper off the treatment. Now we are calling this child just once a week for a maintenance treatment. And I'm very happy to tell you that even during the maintenance phase, there has been no recurrence of any symptoms. All symptoms have subsided. The frequency of treatment is uh, going to be now made fortnightly and then month, once a month and will be gradually stopped. Now, uh, I must uh, confess with you that we, we all know very well that there is no medical treatment for this condition. And acupuncture has been found to be very effective in this one case study. And uh, this case report has already been uh, shared with the North American Journal of Oriental Medicine, which is a journal which comes out from uh, Canada on acupuncture. And they have uh, uh, accepted my case study, case report, and it will be published in soon in the July edition of the Nejom Journal. So this is something, again, which is a very good thing for us that, you know, acceptance of a case report of a condition like this, wherein I have shared the entire protocol of the therapy also for my learned uh, uh, doctors, acupuncturists who are watching this program. Uh, if you all wish to uh, know the protocol, I'll be more than happy to share that with you. You can just give me a WhatsApp and I'll share the entire protocol. 
so that you can also use the same protocol in patients like these and achieve the same results which I have done. I would also like to uh, highlight here uh, what uh, Dr. C.S. Agarwal has said in, a, in his opening remarks about uh, uh, Taurid syndrome, that this excess dopamine is what is known to be one of the very important cause in this condition. And we have also found that, and Professor Nagata has done a lot of research on this, that when he does the basic PNSD treatment, he's actually focusing on that. And he's able to regulate the dopamine uh, levels uh, by uh, using a basic PNSD on the scan. And uh, another thing which is any jerks in the body, uh, like for example, uh, a Parkinsonism, where you have jerks, you know, involuntary movements, or Taurid syndrome, any jerks in the body in acupuncture therapy are known to be caused as, as a symptom of excess wind. So we call it as the liver wind stagnation. So there are specific acupuncture points which are used to bring down the liver wind. This is something which probably a lot of you may not be knowing, but my acupuncture colleagues who are watching me will understand that what is liver wind and there are specific acupuncture points which are used to bring down the liver wind. And this also helps a lot in treating such patients. And this is what uh, we have done. Uh, I would now uh, uh, request uh, Dr. Sahil to kindly go forward with the uh, session. Uh, thank you, Dr. Raman, <clears throat> uh, for the brief about Naman and how you were able to manage the uh, condition uh, using acupuncture and also uh, using the, 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 the new tool that we currently use in our setup, which is called PNST. Uh, all right, so we move on with the session. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Saibal here, who is uh, the father of Naman. And uh, I would I would like to hand over the mic to him. And also Naman is here. Uh, Naman is uh, because I have also treated a few sessions for Naman, and I know that he is an extremely skilled uh, piano player. He is a avid foot footballer, and he is a topper at school. Uh, he would also like to share his experience with these uh, poking of needles and. and uh, you know, did he enjoy the experience or not? So uh, I would like to hear more from uh, Cyber Sir and from Naman. And especially I would like to know, you know, how how uh, how Cyber Sir was able to uh, weather the storm that he's been uh, uh, regarding uh, Tourette syndrome since the past four years. Sir, can you please uh, continue? Doctor, I have can you please uh, unmute? I hope, yeah. Yeah, I have unmuted. Please, I, 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 that's, uh, I can't see myself on the screen, so I guess I'm on the screen right now. Am I on the screen? One, see. One I second, see myself. Doesn't matter. As long as I'm on the screen for everybody else, that should do. I can see you, Dr. Sahil, but I'm not myself. Okay, well, I think, uh, uh, it's good afternoon, everybody. And uh, it was uh, nice to hear from Dr. Agarwal because I have to let everybody know that this symptom with Naman started uh, not four years ago, but five years ago when he was about seven years old. And I, the first uh, step was to go for allopathy and I consulted pediatric neurologist, Dr. Uh, Veena Malotra, yeah, Veena Malotra at Apollo, not once, but several times. I also tried uh, this uh, aspect of consulting uh, cognitive therapy and uh, uh, psychological treatment with Dr. Sen. So I took appointment with him, but I did not go through because uh, at that point of time, Naman had just started with his Tourette. And um, I was concentrating on talking to Naman's pediatrician, as Dr. Anupam Sibyl of Apollo. And uh, so I was going to Dr. Veena. And I was explained uh, by showing her the videos that uh, the treatment, what Dr. Agarwal said, was to actually suppress the excessive dopamine. 
and then fortunately at that same time i guess god is kind i came across a gentleman who whose son uh, had uh, a, was a major case of tourette he is now about 2021 but he had something of a vocal tic called carpolalia which is basically extremely abusive shout outs by the child and that started with his son at the age of 10 and 11 and when i say abusive means extremely abusive and it's uncontrollable it's a tick but it is one of those extreme forms of vocal tick and he advised me you know like this has happened with my son and how he stabilized and then i started doing reading about torret one thing i was not uh, against is because sahil the, uh, the gentleman i'm talking about he advised me that he put his son into uh, the dopamin treatment but it had a uh, serious negative uh, after effects excessive body weight sluggishness uh, dullness and i wasn't ready to go through with that so whatever reading i did i said let me wait this out and what i read was this that if it's transitory in nature then it will go away in a year's time or a little more than a year's time now naman started with a vocal tic which was like a constant uh, mm, 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 mm. and he was just about 7 and that progressed to right eye blinking which became severe but we went through school without interfering and i was just watching it and one had to just live through that period and then after about a year it progressed to other serious motor tics now i tourette is something that i had not experienced before and i was seeing it at home in, in my face and i then it it started climbing into the motor tics were quite severe it started with uh, head knocking this was like this and then it was about complex motor movements like jutting his hand out uh put sticking his hand inside his mouth and then biting his head and he started injuring his head uh, at that point that was about after a year or so and when that started i had somebody recommend to me homeopathy because i was still not ready to put him on a dopamine and i was pretty sure by that time that he had to write because i did several consultations with doctors and whatever i read on google and particularly from mayo clinic uh, i was pretty certain it was tolerant and so i took him to i put him under homeopathic treatment at dr kalyan banerji uh, fortunately at at the start the symptoms wouldn't go away but homeopathy was able to uh, lessen the impact in the sense that if he was biting his hand that stopped a bit uh, if his head jerking was very severe at the times it lessened but none of the symptoms went away so i guess you know when things are like that i also read that the symptoms actually settles in about 40 to 50% of the kids as they reach adulthood and the peak of the symptom is from the age of 10 to 14 when the child is hitting adolescence so because he was away from adolescence i said let me wait uh naman right now is about little more than 12 uh, he's about 12 and a half now and uh, fortunately because of covid the schools had closed everything was online so he was at home but what dr agarwal said was this that uh, the cognitive part is important because uh, you would have a serious uh, case of spasms i would call it spasms the tics and if he got engaged into playing the piano he wouldn't even have one tic and the moment he stopped playing the piano it would start all over again So we lived with it till twenty one. Uh, homeopathic medicines. If he had, he was biting his hand. That stopped. He developed a very strong skin rash under the lips because of sticking his tongue out and wiping his tongue around his lips. So that went on for about two three weeks. But the t- sticking out the sticking the tongue out did not stop. It less. It would just lessen. It was like it was waiting for the next one to start. and july uh, 2021 i noticed that his uh, complex motor tics had taken a different sh- uh, shape 
uh, I don't know how to explain it, but Dr. Kapoor has his short videos, which I don't want anyone to see, but uh, they were very severe. So July, it started progressing. And by the time it hit August, uh, he basically started having convulsions, acute convulsions. Like he was shaking from head to toe. He would just shake like, like an epileptic fit standing. And then the head jerk was not now like a small nod or a aggravated nod, but it would be like to side to side swinging of the head and sticking his tongue out. And it's really started affecting him. And uh, I remember that we had gone to a hotel for dinner where he went, underwent a very severe case of sin, uh, convulsion. And because I had read about acupuncture, uh, the Chinese part of it on the net, which said that they had treated, I asked him, I said, are you ready for acupuncture because that's sticking needles into your body? And he said, yes. And that's how I brought him to Dr. Kapoor on the 1st of September, 2021. And uh, at that time, he had severe motor tics. The vocal tics were there. As I said, that nothing went away. It was it would subside and then graduate into another form. And Dr. Kapoor then started him doing the acupuncture and the pricking with pricking with that whatever that equipment he had in his hand. And that would be like every day for the whole of September. And I and my wife Jyoti, we saw a decline in his the extensiveness of his motor tics. And then Dr. Kapoor, I remember speaking to Dr. Kapoor to say that, you know, he's, he has now periods of calm and then suddenly he, he, there's a breakout for a short period, uh, period and then again the calm comes. So then Dr. Kapoor said that, look, let's now move to thrice a week and that thrice a week went on for a very, very long time. Now we are now, the thrice a week started uh, around 1st of October 2021. And through October, there was remarkable improvement in his extreme motor tics. Uh, I guess till you don't see the video, you will not know how extreme it was. Uh, and that gave me a lot of confidence that I still remember. I called up this gentleman whose son had this, uh, from whom I got to know about Tourette and what, what happens and what treatment. He, went, he had taken his son to US and to London for treatment and put him on a dopamine, but then he withdrew it uh, and recommended to him that, look, this is what's happening with Naman. And he encouraged me to carry through with it and see where it takes us. And slowly and slowly, his motor tics, the excessive motor tics went away. Uh, it took a long time for his head knocking and, and his other facial twitching. Uh, I, I mean, I, by that time, I was so tuned into his uh, uh, takes that I would, I would know at what point he would have the excessive uh, takes breaking out. And so it was like a, it was like a fascinating progression of watching the prognosis. Like when would it leave him? So through the 2021, now we are into 2022, uh, January, where he his improvement was about 50 percent from where he was that's 2022 january and then it became very rapid and over the period of time uh his he is today pretty much without any symptom uh if you i mean i i can't even see it now. like i would be so tuned in to watch him when he's eating because when he had his sensory uh, senses highlight, uh, highlighted because what he was tasting, he would break into twitch and facial grimace and a slight head knock. And even that went away uh, sometime in July 2022. And uh, the last one to go was, as Dr. Kapoor knows, is his head knocking. I still remember in July, he said to me that and that stopped somewhere around uh, August, it went August, August, September, it went away. But I would like the panelists to know, and this Dr. Raman Kapoor knows from me, 
that I and his mother, we still carry that fear inside. Like there could be a breakout. Uh, through this treatment, because there's another thing, Dr. Agarwal, we realize that this is also kind of a psychosomatic uh, syndrome. Uh, something in his brain would tick in and then he would give a reaction to it through the like ticks. So we carried on with his homeopathic doses. We haven't stopped it. Though I, now Naman is online, so he knows. Many a times I would just give him plain water and watch. And he would say it's gone. So, but he, he carries a fear that if, he, if I don't take the homeopathic medicine, then I'll break into ticks. Since July 2022, Naman has had two episodes. Once, only for one day, once in August, where he started taking, sticking his tongue out and once very recently when he started taking his tongue out, but it was just for one day. And I would, I would, on both, on both occasions, I got in touch with Dr. Kapoor immediately and he gave a special session the next day and then it just stopped. And Dr. Kapoor told, uh, informed me that this is going to be like, as he said, that, you know, it was like every day then thrice a week, then it was twice a week for a very long time. Now it's once a week for about three, three months now. And then he's going to peter it off. So I guess somewhere through this whole process, Naman's psychology also has to accept that he is done with this. And uh, also, there's, an, there's, there's another change in Naman. Is that Naman, as a child, was always very hyperactive, but he's highly intelligent and he's, he's gifted in some ways. Not that I'll say he's gifted, but like he taught himself the piano during the COVID times. Uh, he's a drummer. He is relatively uh, good in scholastics. He plays the football because I want him to be into a physical activity. He's also a good debater, speaker, writer for the... Uh, environment club in his in TPS, Vasan Kunj, the youngest writer. So he has all these uh, abilities, uh, but he is hyper. Uh, but from the time that he's got treated by Dr. Kapoor with acupuncture, his hyperactivity is another thing that I noticed has reduced substantially. Well, I'm not going to Second guess this, but I would say that had, Dr. Kapoor has also told me that as he grows older, as his brain size increases, as his physicality increases, he'll be able to sustain the excessive energy in his body and manage it in a better way. So finally, you know, as I, I mean, Dr. Kapoor, I guess you'll agree with me that what I understood from you was this, that as he grows, what he has naturally, the, ex, the excessive energy, he, his body is going to adapt to it. Uh, so that's where with Naman right now, it's uh, uh, when we started acupuncture, Dr. Kapoor, I did not know that it would, whether it would work or not. It was like trying to find a method by which to get over this nightmare. It worked. It worked. It worked. Uh, I must say thank you to you because you had the tremendous confidence that it would work. And I guess that kept us going. Uh, not only uh, not only us but him and he took the needles and that was a big surprise because when he started the acupuncture he would feel pain but he was in a in a situation where he wanted to be treated and that was some coming from inside him and he took the needles today he's very comfortable because it doesn't bother him at all and uh, so I guess, you know, as the treatment continues, he'll be out of it completely. What I would like to share, Dr. Agarwal, particularly with you is this, that in, in whatever reading I did about Tourette, the peak of Tourette happens between 10 to 14. And as the, that's the empirical data. And as the child grows into adulthood, it starts petering off in petering off, not with everybody. It, with the, many it stays excessive what what why i say that uh, why i can say with confidence that acupuncture worked is because he's 12 and a half he's supposed to be at a speak right now and he's absolutely normal 
So something worked in the course of the treatment. Two, I would like all the panelists to know, and that is something even Naman is aware because he, by the time he was eight, he, I guess, secret, secretively, he would read on the net and he figured out what to write was. So seriously speaking, it was nothing that you could hide from him because he would read it. And uh, he's the one, uh, and then I did the reading and there are many celebrities who have to read. And uh, I don't know whether the panelists know that there is a very famous superstar in music in the US, a young girl called Billie Eilish. She is completely open about, open about her Tourette and she is a confirmed case of Tourette syndrome. Uh, David Beckham had Tourette's and that was one of his, because he used to, the Tourette, one of the motor tics is, it's, it's when the person has a violent outburst and he would kick and kick to hurt somebody. And uh, his father then put him into football and that's made him David Beckham. Uh, it, the interesting part is this that uh, I had no idea what Tourette was till I didn't have Naman in my face and to live with it. And I can say with a certain degree of certainty, I don't know how you call it, whether it's Tourette or it's a, a tick syndrome, like uh, the tennis superstar, I'm forgetting his name, uh, Djokovic, uh, no, not Djokovic, the clay court star. Uh, Naman, what's his name, the clay court star? Huh? No, come here. What's his name? Rafi, 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 Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal, every time he serves, he has a coordinated movement of his hand, which goes that he touches his complete body parts, if you watch him, and then he smells his hand and twitches his nose. Now, there are superstars who have all that going on with them. So, I can name many more. Uh, there's a part in the net which says even Beethoven had it. But it shows that this syndrome is something that what Dr. Kapoor said that, okay, thereafter I actually used to walk around the streets and watch different people suddenly break into a, a tick syndrome. And now I would, I, I can tell you very confidently that I at least have noticed 20 people persons around me since then that I can say with certainty have Tourette's. A uh, lot of uh, people have a fear that, I don't know, it's a, I wouldn't call it a fear, but an apprehension that let's hide it, that it is something to do with the, it's, a, it's, it's like a psychological uh, uh, problem. Actually, Tourette is not a, a, completely a psychological problem. It is something that is to do with the brain, which the modern medicine does not know. And one of the reasons I agreed with Dr. Ramun Kapoor is because I need this to reach out to people that if your child has Tourette, which actually starts when the child is a child and not, you can have Tourette's when you're an adult also, but it usually is when the child is around between seven to eight or nine, that you have to, I mean, I would like to reach out to them that if it has worked for him, then maybe it can work for your child. So that's where it's all about me. And now, Dr. Sahil, you can bring Naman on the screen. Sure, sir. Why not, please? So, by what name is Naman here? If I can know. Naman, you're in the uh, under Purnam or you're under Jyoti? Huh? Gurjot Bedi. He's under his mother's. He doesn't have sure, a sir, lot sure, of forms. I have asked. Is yeah, he? he can unmute himself now, sir. Yeah. Can you unmute yourself? Yeah, I have unmuted. Hello. Hi. Hi, Naman. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Sorry, I can't see you, Naman. Where are you? Have you? Uh, I have turned on my camera. So yeah, yeah. My Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Uh, anything that you would like to share, anything and everything, whichever you feel, you know, uh, your, um, what do we say, your interaction with uh, uh, Dr. Raman, your interaction with our uh, clinic staff, <laughs> your interaction with uh, with uh, needles, 
you know anything uh, uh, one more thing uh, before we let uh, naman speak i would like to tell the audience that you know uh, other than uh, the doctors at the clinic and uh, you know uh, there is and uh, naman himself one, one other person who put his heart and soul into uh, you know uh, letting uh, naman be you know what what he is right now and that is uh, mr saibul his uh, father you know he he made sure that naman comes regularly doesn't miss uh, sessions so i think that is also uh, uh, very important yeah all right naman uh, i hand over this uh, session to you anything you, uh, you want to share please uh, naman are you there Oh, Naman, have you unmuted yourself? Can you? Can you unmute? Yes, yes, yes. Now again. Yeah. Now, uh, am I audible? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Naman. Please go ahead. So, like at first, needles were kind of painful, but then they got settled over time, and now I don't feel a thing. As for Dr. Raman Kapoor, he's very funny and always cracks jokes. and so do staff members i think it was kind of bad on my part because initially i should trouble them like a lot because it looked fun but then i stopped and then i created a friendly relationship with everybody so like what once would i do like they would be like putting some powder on moksha and the didi would have just cleaned the entire table i would walk up i would blow and i would run away and then the didi would be like kisne kiya ye so yeah i think naman naman we we missed that uh, side of you but yes i would i would also agree you know that is part of uh, growing up <laughs> nandini but, nandini knows about that incident she really ruined your entire clinic <laughs> after you guys that came with her <laughs> absolutely sir absolutely thank you so much sir for having uh, you know having shared your uh, uh, journey ordeal if i can say and uh, now why don't you talk about the the ticks a little bit and what you feel now yeah absolutely naman okay. please so like first uh, i could describe my ticks as slightly involuntary or actually involuntary in the initial stage when i was young Like I would stretch my neck up like this, like it would be something that I felt, or I would constantly keep bouncing on the sofa that I couldn't control, and then it came to head knocking. What then I found was that what I watch is what I do. Like if I accidentally watched a movie that in which he would head knocking, like say he was a prisoner or whatever, so that actually became a tick, and that was actually with various of my ticks. So like first I used to grunt. just grunt like i was like you know an irritation in my throat but that went away then what happened was one day i got a a word i got stiffness in my neck so i used to stretch it and then that became a tick and then that stopped then after a while i started knocking my head which became quite prominent and i also noticed that every time i had a headache i would just knock my head to relieve it so that became a tick so like it used it used to just progress like this until it, like a point when i was at a family dinner like dad said and i went crazy with the head knocking so then dad suggested acupuncture and i said yes after that i have seen great improvements uh the urge to have a tick is basically no more i don't do any ticks i'm basically completely fine dr raman kapoor has truly cured me thank you thank you naman for the lovely words and uh, we wish uh, uh, naman all the best in his uh, f- uh, future uh, along with playing some nice uh, football and uh, you know uh, gaining more skill levels with his uh, piano lessons best of luck naman thank you so much thank you uh next i would like to uh, uh, hand over this session to dr sunita kapoor 
she is a senior acupuncturist at kapoor acupuncture clinic new delhi uh, she has also been practicing acupuncture now for more than 2 uh, decades she uh, specializes in in treating failed ivf and iui cases with acupuncture and she will be discussing the benefits of using acupuncture in managing infertility cases uh dr smita if you if you could please unmute you unmute yourself am i audible to all yes please yes please thank you sahil uh so that was very nice presentations regarding the tourette syndrome Uh, so moving on to another aspect of the role of acupuncture in various other fields uh, i basically work a lot with women and men regarding the treatment of infertility acupuncture is very helpful in these aspect it can not only be used for treatment of various causes of infertility in both men and women but it can be carried out right from conception to birth to maintain the growth of a healthy baby throughout the pregnancy and treat all problems which may develop during pregnancy uh, acupuncture can stimulate the body's hormonal system to do what it is supposed to do means secrete the right hormone at the right time in a women's menstrual cycle and especially during pregnancy so there are various causes which can cause infertility in men and women like pcod endometriosis ovulatory defects recurrent miscarriages problems with implantation fibroids so in men there could be problem with the sperm morphology volume counts motility so we take care of all these through acupuncture and there are many problems which can come up throughout the pregnancy of 9 months which many of them can be taken care of with acupuncture there are various studies which have been, which have take, uh, been uh, formulated in various journals especially in the journals of fertility and sterility by american society for reproductive medicine they authentically say that acupuncture is really very helpful if it is uh, combined uh, along with the assisted reproductive technologies like iebf and iui the result rates and the success rates of these assisted arts they uh, are doubled uh, if the every patient is uh, combined with acupuncture along with uh, whatever western protocol have been used for the infertility <clears throat> so according to the western studies acupuncture boosts the ivf process by influencing the level of pituitary and the ovarian hormones the electroacupuncture improves the blood flow into the uterine arteries it also relaxes the uterus around the time of the embryo transfer and reduces the uterine contractions and prevents the expulsion of the transferred embryo and especially all over the world and also now in india various big chains of hospitals where they have the ibf setups they use acupuncture as a complementary system of therapy to assist every patient who come for infertility treatment male or female and many women who find their way to my clinic they arrive discouraged disheartened hoping against hope that there might be an alternative that will allow them to have a child and it's my effort and my responsibility to offer these women a source of hope that the factors causing this difficulty in conceiving can be taken care of and their body be restored to health i have various uh, cases to present but let me present the case of a woman who represents many hundreds who bring me their fertility issues along with their despair and hope uh, the lady who came to me was a 39 year old lady who was diagnosed with infertility and who failed to conceive even after 9 years of marriage she had pcod and low amh level the anti mullerian hormone level and she had undergone three ivfs at various uh, fertility clinics but failed to conceive it was then she that she opted for acupuncture at my clinic her fertility issue was evaluated according to all the western medicine concepts and also the traditional system of acupuncture 
to identify the status of the meridians which are running across the reproductive organs and keeping her disease meridians in mind she was given acupuncture moxibustion and cupping therapy for 3 months and after that she conceived naturally and gave birth to a full term healthy baby girl we what she went through in my clinic i just want to uh, go for that four step program which were followed for her to balance her energies and prepare her body to nurture a child at my clinic program is designed specifically for every individual patient the first step is to diagnose what's going wrong with her reproductive system and second step is to change her diet to remove the damp and heat which disturb the blood flow to the uterus and the ovaries third step is to clear her energy meridians which are blocked this is done through acupuncture and fourth step is to increase her chances of conception through the use of natural energetic substances which we call as supplements that correct blind deficiencies it's important to identify the correct kind of supplements required for individual patients acupuncture also led to the complete relaxation and stress reduction in her i would like to end my talk here because we have a very very uh, very good speakers uh, after me and we would love to hear them dr kiran bedi this is pinaz masani so i would like to end here and thank you all for inviting me for this panel thank you dr sahil thank you dr sunita for those uh lovely words and uh, uh we will we will be i am sure we'll be having some uh, questions from the audience regarding uh treatment of infertility with acupuncture and we'll be having those uh, questions later for now i would like to call our next panelist uh, who's also been a beneficiary of acupuncture treatment and she uh, requires no introduction whatsoever she is dr kiran bedi ji uh she is the first uh, woman to have joined the elite uh, indian police services in 1972 she was the 24th lieutenant governor of puducherry ma'am is an ex itn alumni and a, a maxese award winner ma'am is also a renowned author she also has a lot of books in her name and she runs ngos to help the underprivileged ma'am uh we are indeed very very uh, privileged to have you here with us and i hand over this session to you ma'am uh ma'am i hope uh, you can unmute yourself unmuted yes ma'am thank you ma'am my i want to thank the entire kapoor family i think you are a very rare combination of dr raman kapoor dr sunita kapoor and dr sahil kapoor it's a wonderful very blessed family of a husband wife son it's a very rare happening and you have really magic in your hands i've seen magic happening and i would urge i think we should all collectively come together to approach the government of india to make acupuncture integrated i think we are losing out many many valuable many patients in need of not wanting to pop in pills chemicals into our body with acupuncture we can be better treated and healed and healed not only treated healed because this family of kapoor's and the raman clinic and the kapoor clinic is very professional very ethical very sanitized very hygienic very compassionate very caring very caring very willing very accommodating i am a beneficiary of the time i lost my voice completely when i strayed wrongly into electoral politics circumstances at that time uh, pulled me into electoral politics against my grain and my throat was not oriented to do those speeches and within days i could not even hear my own self i remember how dr raman kapoor and dr sunita kapoor 
both of them, husband, wife, team came at night at my house, at night on a urgent call through Dr. Sama's clinic. Dr. Sama was a, a gem of a man of, of Gangaram Hospital. He's the one who introduced me to this Kapoor clinic. It is they who, how at night they responded to an urgency call and revived my voice, revived my voice within days, within days. The shortest possible time I could have ever experimented. Besides the voice, thereafter, I've been to Dr. Clinic, Dr. Kapoor Clinic for various other things, small or big. And I've seen the way they have cared me, cared for me, compassionately accommodating my time constraints and urgencies. My only uh, 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 request to the entire, and by the way, they are scientific. Uh, they have they're scientific i if somebody says it's not evidence based it is evidence based because my energy levels were checked there is a proper uh, 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 reporting of my energy levels and exactly where my energies are low they also help me revive my energy the uh, fastest possible way and they had scientifically analyzed where i was energy low and it was revealed in the results itself so a i found this analytical. I found this documented. I found this very uh, receptive. I found this very uh, professional. And I found it very ethical. And also non-chemical popping systems in my liver. That's what I was really looking for to not, not have these antibiotics into my system. It worked. So my stiff neck muscles, my voice, my asiatic, uh, uh, the pain in the neck, blood, bladder, many, many things went in. I'm being personal because I wanted to be evidentiary. But everything, everything got attended to in the shortest possible time without popping in any chemicals into my body. Friends, I think we owe it to the humanity. We owe it to the medical fraternity. We owe it to ourselves as citizens that we all collectively sign a petition and sign up to say we've all experienced the magic, the promptness of and the, the uh, value of this acupuncture and that it should be part of the integrative medical medicines, uh, 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 whatever you call it, subjects or portfolios, just as physiotherapy is and many others are. If this too becomes one, that means you're giving more options to the patients um, to be healed and cured. I think that's the reason with which I thought I would come here. I would be very happy to be the one of the signatories of evidence-based benefits uh, for, for this clinic and, and his clan. After all, acupuncture is also a, a, a community. Acupuncturists are a community. So that they call research together. They can train together and they can work together. And I think, and also contribute, like Dr. Kapoor's article would be soon coming out on one of the very uh, chronic uh, disease, which he's mentioning. And uh, for me, it was, I never realized that this was a, uh, it was a, it was a disease. I didn't know, I'm sorry for the word of disease. It may not be a disease, but it's a habit. I used to see people with many other such things. I never knew that this is repetitive and this could be cured. So friends, I, uh, since I, I'm sorry, I've got, I've taken Dr. Sunita Kapoor's number. What a gem of a woman she is. What a great family it is. I would say, let's have this blessed family contribute to larger good of this humanity. And that we all should come together to um, see that this discipline now becomes part of medical fraternity. And all patients would have all these options available if they don't want to get into steroids they don't want to get into these bio, uh, uh, these chemicals. They could go and try and try. Try acupuncture. If it works, excellent. Well, if it doesn't, you are medical. Uh, all other therapies are still available. But why not try acupuncture, which is, which is non-chemical uh, uh, and keeps the body clean and healthy? I thought I could uh, thank you, Dr. Raman Kapoor, Dr. Sunita and Sahil for giving me and Dheeraj Sethi all of you together, that you've given me this opportunity to bring public, bring to public domain how I have benefited um, uh, for the last two, three years. Two, three years I have benefited and how uh, willing and how accessible this family is, how methodical they are, 
how approachable they are, that they can have. And all you need is time from Dr. Kapoor or you only about time from Sunita or Dr. Sam. So thank you. Let's all resolve. I think this, this should be not just a learning and a listening session. It could lead to a proactive, transformative session where acupuncture is also brought into multidisciplinary medical care. Thank you, Dr. Kapoor. Thank you so much, Kiran, ma'am, for those kind words. And I I hope your uh, words uh, resonate well with the uh, government of India. And I hope we can do something really soon in terms of integrative medicine. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Take care. I have a now, now a new session waiting for me with an educational institution. So I would beg leave. I'll take another opportunity when you have the next session. I know thank Benaz you. is also waiting to share with you how she has thank also you. got her voice back. So thank you, Doctor. Doctor. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Take care, ma'am. Uh, sorry for the delay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, our our next uh, panelist and also a uh, beneficiary of acupuncture, a uh, renowned uh, Gazal singer and a Padma Shri awardee in two thousand and nine. Uh, we call her lovingly the Shezadi Tarunum of India. We have with us Miss Pinaz Masani ji, and let's hear her side of the story. Uh, Ma'am, I have unmuted you. It's uh, wonderful to be here. Such an interactive session knew so much about the Tourette syndrome and I'm so happy that uh, Naman is now on his way to recovery or is recovered completely. And uh, I think Dr. Kiran Bedi has Whatever I wanted to say, she has put it in such excellent point-to-point -point basis that I second everything she says. I want to add uh, something that what I love about Dr. Raman Kapoor and Dr. Sunita Kapoor and Sahil and the entire Kapoor acupuncture clinic is their holistic approach towards a problem. They don't just look at the uh, uh, what is, they want to get to the root of the problem, not just the symptom. It is not only looking after one's physical health, but it's, it's, it's about somebody's mental, emotional, spiritual well-being. So I say holistic approach towards a problem. So I have been singing, as you all know, for the last 40 years and having to sit cross-legged for a very long period of time. I developed a very bad back pain and a massive knee pain. And I, of course, used to take all those allopathy medicines like myospas and, oh my God, <laughs> and all those uh, fantasies to, uh, to, to kill the effect of myospas. And it, it really ruins the system. So uh, in one of uh, uh, the parties in Delhi, uh, thanks to Air Marshal Naresh Parma, I met Dr. Raman Kapoor and Sunita Ji. And that's when I just happened to talk to them and express my problem. And they were so forthcoming. As you know, I am from Mumbai and they are in Delhi. So they said, if you can come to Delhi and do a few sessions, like 30 sessions, then I'm sure we can solve your problems. So this got me very excited. And I, in April 2022, which is exactly last year, this time, I uh, got a flight to Delhi and I went to GK2 and uh, the, uh, the Kapoor Clinic and I started my sessions with them. Uh, it is an absolute experience to be in uh, the clinic from the, the hygiene, the, the, the way the staff greet you, uh, the cleanliness of the room which you have to be pinned down to, I mean pinned down to. It is absolutely uh, excellent. And they don't, Dr. Raman Kapoor is, was directly helping me. There was not a, uh, uh, he would remember each and everything which he did in the previous session. They come to talk to you. They, they, they listen to you. They listen to your problems. So it's a very, very I did about 
I think I was there for almost a year. I, I still, I will still go to them in the near future. So all the problems, uh, whatever I had, it's healing, it's healed, and I feel a better person and so non-intrusive. Even the moxa, even whatever they do, it's just the feel-good feeling. You come out energized, as Dr. Kiran Bedi said, there is an energy map and you can see on the paper that yes, your energy levels, your dopamine has increased and your energy levels have increased. And everything today has to do with the mind. So they tackle the mind. Uh, sorry, ma'am, we are not able to hear you. Your audio is not. Is that better? Yes, yes. So, uh, so the clinic is wonderful. Uh, they have a very positive approach to things. Everything's very scientific. Uh, everything is written down. Extremely clean and hygiene and acupuncture does work for a lot of problems. And yes, I would urge everyone who has a problem, please try it at least once. It could save you a, a, of a lot of um, the, the abuse of the body through allopathy and the allopathic medicines, which doctors just prescribe. And you know, and with they give you yelije, yelije, They don't know what it's doing to your inner being. So acupuncture is wonderful, Doctor Raman Kapoor, Doctor Sunita Kapoor Sahil. Thank you so much for not giving up on me. Thank you for following up with me, and uh, I. It's been wonderful to be on this panel, Dr. C.S. Agarwalji. It was lovely listening to you, Dr. Kiran Bedi. And Naman, I wish you all the best. And Saibal, you're a wonderful father. God bless you and everybody else on this chat. It's been a wonderful association with Dr. And the best part of the doc uh, Dr. Raman Kapoor is Bogate. So he's a, he's a musician, he's a singer. But he say, you know, hum log to, uh, when he comes in, he's so cheerful and for Ghana Sunate, wo bhi gaate hai. So it's it's therapy. It's actually a therapy, a holistic approach to a problem. Thank you. Thank you so much for being there for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pinaz ma'am. Thank you for the kind words. And as Dr. Raman Kapoor would put it always, live every day as it is. Do not think about the past, do not think about Absolutely. the future. That Absolutely. is how that is how life oh. is meant to be. Yes, thank you, Doctor. And I believe in that now. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Take care, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, next, we next let's uh, go on to a few uh, few questions that we had. Um, I'll uh, put the questions forward. Few to Dr. Sunita and few to Dr. Raman. I'll start with the first question, which I'm putting forward to Dr. Sunita. So somebody wants to know, Dr. Sab, uh, they want to know regarding their brother's treatment for a br uh, brain clot that they had uh, using acupuncture. Dr. Sunita, could you please unmute yourself? Yeah, please, Dr. Sunita. Yeah. Could you repeat the question, Sahil? So somebody wants to know regarding their brother's brain clot treatment. Brain clot means he's got a stroke. Probably, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, see, acupuncture is more helpful in the sequel of the post-stroke. Uh, comp as a post-stroke complication. We usually treat uh, if it is caused by hemiplegia, aconia. So acupuncture is most useful in that. We start within one month of the stroke, you know, a brain clot which has happened, which is called the So we can give
give acupuncture for that and uh, it helps in restoring the connection between the brain and the paralyzed part of the body yeah so i don't know how long it has happened uh, how long it, uh, ago it happened in your brother's case regarding uh, the brain clot when 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 did it happen i can't hear anyone yeah uh, so i would like to say that uh, sir uh, you can get your brother for the consult yeah. and you can get in touch with the uh, clinic and we can plan the further course of action dr sunitha one more question uh, somebody asked how effective is acupuncture in the treatment of autism dyslexia and other spectrum disorders since you also deal with uh, the uh, pediatric age group yes yeah so over a period of time since i have been practicing for last 38 years now uh, so uh, my according to my experience if we start treating the child under the age of 7 years the results in all the dyslexic children the autistic children the results are fantastic you know we have been uh, able to get these children from mild to moderate cases of autism out of the entire spectrum and behave them behave make them behave like a normal child but severe autism yes definitely we are we i don't take up and because i have i don't get any results in the severe cases of autism otherwise the hyperactivity the concentration the social uh, interaction everything improves in mild to moderate children if we start them as early as say Three years or four years, as soon as they are diagnosed, under seven. After seven years of age, the results are not promising with acupuncture. And we really don't do acupuncture in these children. We mostly do color therapy or PNST in these children, which is which have got equal effect as we had we would have done with the needles. Uh, thank you, Dr. Sunita, for answering those uh, questions. and thank you for taking time out from your busy schedule we know that you have been traveling uh, thank you so much and uh, uh, take care ma'am uh, next we have a few questions uh, i would like to ask dr raman if he can if he can answer those both of them are related so the first one being uh, is acupuncture effective for adult uh, tourette syndrome and somebody uh, one of us probably is a uh, learned doctor he wants to learn uh, pns tree uh, treatment so how how can he uh, go uh, go about that yeah dr raman first question was about uh, the um, adult tourette syndrome so basically if, uh, as dr agarwal was also mentioning in his starting only that uh, it reminds you of the movie hitchki when which vidya balan played the role of the uh, uh, person who uh, suffered from tourettes and uh, she actually uh, carried on the problem into her adulthood and as a result of which she was rebuked about also and you know a lot of uh, jokes were made about her as a teacher so that was basically my also first exposure uh, uh, when i saw the movie as to how much sufferance a child would be going through and if the same child carries on that problem in adulthood how much sufferance it will be there so yes uh, a lot of patients who uh, uh, definitely suffer from this problem can carry it into adulthood uh, uh, starting of uh, tourettes in adulthood i have not really seen but mostly uh, the, the pro progress of the disease from childhood into adulthood has been seen and if a, uh, if an adult has tourette syndrome i am quite confident that with the type of protocol which we have followed with naman also we should be able to give him good results second question was regarding pnst now pnst is a as i said to you is a very scientific treatment based on the dermatome theory and we recently because professor nagata uh, since covid started immediately after we came back from japan he has given us the rights to uh, teach pnst in india to me and sunita only and we couldn't do any live workshops we just did one workshop 
which was uh, in Chennai in February of 2020. And thereafter, we never did it. And the second workshop was done recently in March of 23. And uh, that was a very well attended workshop. It was uh, conducted by all three of us together, me, Sunita and Sahil. And uh, we, uh, uh, we have tied up with the uh, most uh, uh, popular uh, e-learning platform in the world on acupuncture, which is known as Net of Knowledge. And our institute, wherein Dr. Sunita conducts courses for medical doctors on acupuncture, uh, IANM ADU, Institute of Acupuncture, which, which she has been conducted, conducting courses for the last now 20 years. And we have trained about 400 doctors in acupuncture all over the country and abroad who have come to us to learn. So we normally get about 15 to 20 doctors in a batch and we teach them. And that is the best way forward. And I'm quite confident that the way Dr. Uh, Bedi was saying that we could get formal recognition from the government of India, we can probably promote this science much more. And it will always be a, 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 a way forward for integrative healthcare, which our prime minister has always been talking about. So integrative healthcare is the way forward for a lot of conditions. And I'm quite confident that Dr. Garwal is also nodding that this is the way forward you know, today in today's world because no one system, even acupuncture is not a complete system that way that it can be a cure-all. And same way Western medicine is not a cure-all. So let us work together to make life better for all human beings. And that's the main thing. So the doctor who has asked us about PNSD, yes, he can get in contact with us and we let him know as and when we have our next workshop and he is most welcome to learn PhD. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Dr. C.S. Agarwal. Uh, I'll request. Uh, thank you, Dr. Raman, for answering those uh, questions for us. Uh, so whenever you guys speak about uh, the integrative medicine, I am always reminded of my uh, days at uh, post-graduation. Wherein, so I am a postgraduate in uh, anesthesia and now I specialize into pain management. So while I was doing anesthesia, you know, my head of department used to always uh, remind me that Sahil, you know, whenever you are reading a particular chapter, you know, one book will not suffice. So maybe you will have one book giving you the chapter in, you know, one good way, one other book having the uh, chapter in one good way. So same is, same is with with the integrative medicine no science is uh, complete sometimes we need a, a combination of uh, doctors i also call them artists to be able to you know uh, heal you and sometimes we need uh, therapies one after the other so yes so we have to have this integrative approach which is uh, very very important uh, thank you for the audience I, I i thank the audience for their kind uh, listening and I would like to next get Dr. Sunita here and uh, to uh, provide the vote of thanks. Dr. Sunita. Dr. Sunita. Yes, Dr. Sunita, please. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sahil, for organizing this enlightening talk. Uh, special thanks to Dr. Raman Kapoor, uh, uh, Naman, his father, Sebul, and uh, Kiran, ma'am, and uh, Pinaz Masani, ma'am. Uh, it was indeed a very learning experience for us to, you know, I have heard about many neurological conditions being treated with acupuncture. But yes, this was an absolutely eye-opener and a very, very difficult condition. And I congratulate uh, Dr. Raman for that. He, I know, uh, being his wife, I know how much hard work he puts in for every individual patient. And Naman's condition, and he himself was very special to him. And he put his heart, soul, mind, everything into his treatment and brought out the results, which were commendable. And I know I, the world should know that, you know, they should try this particular kind of therapy for if they suffer from any such condition uh, next time. And, uh, and thank you so much, uh, Kiran ma'am, for sharing her enlightening talk about her own personal problem and the role of acupuncture that uh, has uh, been played in resolving them. It's very few uh, you know, a few times that we come across people of her stature who 
uh, are able to you know share their own experiences personal experiences to the world so thank you so much ma'am and i'm sure with your support help and guidance we would be able to help uh, acupuncture be soon recognized as one of the mainstream therapies and as dr raman is trying his level best um, you know uh, communicating interacting with the government of india to help us in doing achieving that uh, so that we are able to open up more uh, colleges you know where properly the education about acupuncture is given to uh, the students to the students who want to learn alternative forms of therapy and thanks a lot for the pinaz masani ma'am her magnificent persona and uh, you know she is an epitome of beauty so it was very nice to get the opportunity to treat you ma'am and get the results and hear it from you and uh, so thank you thanks to my audience um, you know who patiently listened to this one and a half hours of webinar uh, and took out especially on a sunday morning thank you everyone thank you thank you dr sita and i would like to specially thank uh, dr cs agrawal my colleague at sir gangaram hospital such a senior man to have taken out time uh, from his busy schedule and be with us today on a sunday afternoon and thanks to all the audience for having come over and be being with us and we look forward to definitely keeping in touch with all of you and whenever we have our next uh, interactive session we'll definitely let you know thank you very much sir thank you